called the Free Press Action Fund. That, oh, thank you. So I work with an organization called the Free Press Action Fund. Sounds cool. What is it? I love it. Um, we advocate for um, basically improving the internet, getting more people online, making it easier to use the internet. And I have some petitions here. We have 16,000 people signed them asking the, uh, sorry about that. Well, I'm not going to take 16,000 signatures from you. But, <laughs> but, um, but they're demanding that the next president have a real vision for getting America online and improving the quality of the internet, um, basically protecting their rights to connect and communicate online. And one of the issues in the petition is um, letting Americans you know, communicate online without unwarranted surveillance. And some of your opponents, um, particularly Ted Cruz, has been really out I there recently. I'm, I'm a proponent of me. Okay? <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that you have a positive message. Um, and so Ted Cruz has been talking a lot about increasing online surveillance, particularly of Muslim communities. And I was wondering if you could yeah, respond I mean, let's, to that. Let, well, first of all, we, we don't want to polarize somebody on the basis of their religious beliefs. Because if we want to know, let's just take Muslims for a second. If we want to know whether there is radicalization going on among some people in the Muslim community, who do you think we ought to ask? <laughs> Probably a Muslim. <laughs> yes. And if we want to know wh whether the mosque is being radicalized and there's some fire breather over there talking about, about killing us, let me ask you this question. Who, do you, who is in this room do you think can go to a mosque right now? Huh? I mean, you'd take about five steps and they'd say, wonder what she's doing, right? right. <laughs> you want to talk to people in the mosque. If you want to know what's happening in the, any community, the Catholic community, you ask somebody who's in the Catholic community. So polarizing people will hurt us in the long run. Secondly, the surveillance issue, you know, it's a very tricky one. The way I think about it is, say I own a hotel, okay, and say the police come and they want to check out something in the hotel. Well, I don't think I need to have a master key where I can search every room. Mm -hmm. I just need to have a key that can get into the room that I need to get into. And it's also very interesting that if you talk to the people in intelligence, um, they do not particularly want to be intrusive. They don't. They believe there are ways that, for example, um, with our biggest danger in this country is the lone wolf and the homemade terrorist. By the way, I served on the Defense Committee for 18 years, the Armed Services Committee. I've been doing this stuff all of my lifetime. They will tell you that's the toughest one. They believe that the best way to find out about, what's, about the lone wolf or the terrorist is the next door neighbor somebody in the community that observes. They don't want to break into everybody's stuff because they see a danger in that. So I think it's possible to have appropriate intelligence gathering and still protect the rights of citizens. I was glad when they finally, I, I was glad when Rand Paul finally forced them to have to go to a judge before they can just go and look at something. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we don't like big government, why would we like big government that can spy? We have to be suspicious because it's our rights that are better, uh, better at risk. Now, let me just say one thing about the internet. The reason why the internet now is so important is because if you want to deal with poverty in rural areas, you they have to have access to high-speed internet service. That's one of the things we're working on in my state. And we have Appalachia. We have a lot of poverty. You know, rural poverty is a big deal. Uh, I, I actually advised a senator from Iowa, uh, who's a terrific lady, uh, to, to focus on rural poverty. Because it's a problem. We think about urban poverty, we don't think about rural poverty. If you want to begin to deal with that, part of the, one of the tools you need is a high-speed internet and access to it, right? Yeah. And now we're getting to a point where you can Wi-Fi. There's so many opportunities down the road for this. So um, thanks for your question. and. Uh, I don't know where you, where you should count me, but count me whatever you want, okay? <laughs> yes, right here. Beautiful jacket. 